Welcome back. This is the final part of my three-part series for the Beginner's Guide to GCI, which will go over communicating with players on a live server as well as basic brevity. If you do not have SRS or LOT ATC installed, none of this will make sense to you. I would highly recommend either going back and watching parts 1 and 2, or watching my all-in-one version which has all three videos combined. With that out of the way, let's get into the nitty-gritty of comms. As an AWACS, the main way that you will be conveying information to other players is through brawl calls, until you start dabbling into picture calls, which I will cover briefly later. BRA is an acronym you've likely heard before playing DCS. It stands for Bearing, Range, Altitude, Aspect, and is often appended with the type and sometimes the speed of the contact. BRA calls are relative to the aircraft you are giving them to. A BRA call for someone off of another player's aircraft is worse than useless, so keep this in mind. The most basic example of a BRA call is... Dagger 1 1, magic. Bra 2 2 1, 32, 16,000, hot, hostile, frogfoot. Putting this into bite sized pieces, you open with the aircraft's call sign you were giving the bra call to, Dagger 1 1, then your call sign, magic. Give the bearing to the target, the range to the target, the height in thousands of feet. Not angels, which is a term exclusively used for friendly aircraft. The aspect of the target, hot in this case, means the target is moving straight towards them. Specify the target is hostile, and then give the type of aircraft, which is a Su-25 or Frogfoot. Killing the bad habit before it starts, do not say at or four in your transmission. Remember what I said about SRS and being difficult to hear sometimes? At could easily be confused for the number eight, and four could easily be confused for the number four, but I digress. To elaborate on aspects a bit, there are four aspects, hot, flank, beam, and drag, which are all attached with a cardinal direction with the exception to hot. Aspects, like bras, are relative to the aircraft you are giving it to. So if an enemy is moving towards the friendly aircraft you are talking to, you would call out HOT. If the enemy is moving towards the friendly, but not exactly nose on, you would call out FLANK and give a cardinal direction. You could call something like FLANK NORTHWEST. If the enemy seems to be moving perpendicular to the friendly, you would call out beam, as well as giving a cardinal direction. For example, beam north. If the enemy is moving away from the friendly, you would call out drag, again giving a cardinal direction. For example, drag east. If you are wondering why I am saying drag in place of cold, is because drag is actually the correct term to be using. Cold is slang in this case. You should always be using drag instead of cold. Type is simple. It just requires some memory. I'll leave a resource to NATO reporting names for various aircraft, but on screen I will show some of the most common aircraft that you will be encountering on Georgia at War, as well as their reporting names. Speed is entirely optional. If you were to call speed, calling fast would apply to a target moving between 600 to 900 knots ground speed or Mach 1 to Mach 1.5. Calling very fast applies to targets exceeding 900 knots ground speed or Mach 1.5. Feel free to disregard everything extra that I have added to the basics of a bra call such as the speed or type and just stick to the basics of bearing range, altitude, and aspect. When you start feeling more comfortable, you could venture into some of the quote-unquote advanced ways of getting into a bra call. 
The alternative to a bra call is a bullseye call, and references the bullseye placed on the map, which is in the same position for all friendly aircraft. If you turn on the bullseye setting on the bottom right of lot ATC, using your measuring line automatically makes it start from the bullseye and end to your cursor. Giving a bullseye call is the exact same thing as giving a bra call. The only difference in this transmission would be saying bullseye in place of bra, and using the bullseye tool for the correct bearing and ranges. For example, Viper 1-1, Magic, Group, Bullseye, 0 2, 2 35, 42,000, Track West, Hostile Fulcrum. Killing another bad habit before it starts, refrain from saying bulls instead of bullseye, since it can be mistaken for something completely different. Just remember to stick to saying bullseye when giving a bullseye call. To actually get the information for a bra or bullseye call, you use the measuring line, not the bra tool. Do this by putting your cursor over top of the requesting aircraft, hold right click and drag to whatever area or icon you want a bearing in range to. If it isn't following your cursor, make sure that the bullseye setting isn't turned on at the bottom right of lot ATC. In that area, there is also a snapping option for the measuring line if you wish to turn it on. And if the text for the measuring line is too small, go into your map settings and crank the font size of the measuring line. On Georgia at War, you'll want to go Sunrise on the Discord first. To do this, go to the appropriate Discord channel and type a message that is formatted like this. In this case, inside the Georgia at War text channel, you start with the command prefix of exclamation mark GCI. You then write Sunrise, indicating that you are active. The abbreviation of the server you are on, so if you're on Georgia at War, type GAW, G-A-W, like I did. If you are on the Persian Gulf at War server, you would type in PGAW, P-G-A-W. After this, you would write your call sign, in my case, Galaxy. After that, you would write the frequency you will be occupying, so 134.0, the dedicated player GCI net. And then at the end, you would add any remarks that you may have. For example, you could add that you are a newer GCI. This makes it so whenever people do the exclamation mark GCI command, it says that you are on Georgia at War on 134, what your call sign is, and that you are a newer GCI if you choose to include that. Which I would, since you may get one or two people key in on the intercom offering help, which is a common occurrence among new GCIs. After doing this, connect to the server on SRS following the steps I listed previously, turn on your AWACS overlay, set up your frequencies, connect to the server on lot ATC, fix your docks if they've moved around like the floating windows will do sometimes, and then you can begin your GCI duties. Before we begin, I want to lay an extremely important ground rule. You are a suggestion. Nobody is required to talk to you, listen to you, or even tune into your frequency. It does get annoying at times seeing someone right there that you could have helped, but can't because they probably don't know that SRS exists still, but this comes at the territory. If you remember this single golden rule, you will avoid a lot of hair pulling down the line. Another rule that I encourage is that you don't have to be 100% professional when it's speaking. Everyone would rather a GCI that is sloppy or inexperienced than one that is incorrect. Have fun with it. This is a video game. Not everything has to be done by the book. It is okay not knowing a term or two. Just don't act like you know what you're doing when watching this is likely evidence that you don't. Personally, I am not a professional. I have no real-world experience. I am still learning all of this myself, and I get things wrong from time to time, and that is okay. Practice makes perfect, and we're all here to have fun. Remember that.
with using SRS, you won't sound like you may think. You will sound like this. Now add all of the noises people might be hearing when trying to listen to you. They may have their RWR going off, their afterburner on, they're Rio talking to them. They may be listening to music. You may have a thick accent making it hard to understand you sometimes. It is extremely hard to understand you if you are not talking correctly. When speaking to your aircraft, speak clearly and slowly, similar to how I am talking to you now. This is the first step of becoming a proficient AWACS. Another important thing to note, SRS is not what is called full duplex, but half duplex. What this means is that there can only be one person talking at a time. Otherwise, it will cause interference and the message will not get through and it will sound like this. It is important that you are making sure that you are not stepping over anyone talking as it is essentially jamming anyone else's communications for the duration both of you have your microphone keyed. Now what you should do is announce your presence to the server. In the AWACS panel, on the bottom right, there's a button that says Simul Transmission or Simultaneous Transmission. Turning this on and pressing the ST button on your panel for up to three different frequencies makes it so when you begin transmitting on the radio, it will mirror that transmission on all of your selected frequencies. Normally, I will announce that I am Sunrise on 134, 253, 251, and 249.5. You do this by turning on ST for frequencies 253, 251 and 249 and then pressing your push to talk for radio 134. When doing this, you say something to the tune of all stations, GCI is sunrise on frequency 134.0, call sign magic. After alerting the horde of players that a human controller is active when you announce you are sunrise, you will get flooded with people checking in with you. Some of the most common check-ins can be boiled down into six parts. Their call sign, how many of them, their airframe, their location, their mission type, their air-to-air -air loadout and fuel or their state, and finally their intent. Alternatively, some aircraft may ask you for an alpha check, which is a way of asking to confirm their location relative to the bullseye. In this case, it could be rearranged to their call sign, how many, their airframe, their location, their air-to-air -air loadout and fuel, their mission type, and request alpha check, which is their way of asking, what is my bullseye? An important thing to note in Lot ATC an aircraft's call sign in game is completely different from their chosen call sign in their username. So whenever you see call sign in lot ATC, like what is shown in the objects tool, ignore it completely. By far the easiest way of locating where an aircraft is when they check in with their call sign is by going into said objects tool on the sidebar turning on the human filter, scrolling down until you find their call sign and their username, or by searching for it in the search bar. Double-clicking anything inside the objects tool will automatically snap your view to them. When an aircraft checks in with you, most GCIs who control on Georgia at War will usually mark them as neutral, which will show them as green instead of blue on the map. This helps keep track of who is actually listening to you and is a hell of a lot better than trying to remember each person's call sign when you could be controlling up to 20 people or more at the same time in the same area. You do this by clicking on the aircraft applicable and pressing F5 by default. Alternatively, through the Selection Properties tool, click where it says Classification and select Neutral Air. 
I do not believe changing someone's classification has implications on other servers with more realistic settings, but on Georgia at War, it does not and is common practice. After finding the aircraft who checked in with you, respond to the check-in, which would begin with Viper 1-1, Magic, Radar Contact. If you were requested to give an alpha check, here you would tell them their bullseye. You would then add alpha check, bullseye 22378. For someone who's checked in for seed, you can give them a bra or bullseye call to wherever you are getting ground radar contacts, which are almost always going to be sans. After the initial response of Viper 1-1, Magic, Radar Contact, Alpha Check, Bullseye, 22378, you would say SA-8 and SA-15 Active, Bullseye, 11052. Galaxy F-16, Bambi-11, checking in full seed load, currently engaged. Bambi-11, Radar Contact, Bullseye, 20721, Angels, 24... Uh, yeah, those are going to be S two SA ten clusters. Bra one zero three twenty eight. Caution: You have two. An aircraft requesting tasking for cap or combat air patrol. If an enemy is close enough, a simple bogey dope will suffice. A bogey dope is a brevity term that breaks down to a bra call to the closest group of enemies. For example, dagger one one magic group. Bra, 093-23-25,000. Hot, hostile, flanker. For cap aircraft checking in with you that may be late to the party, you could tell them to anchor at a position. Anchor is a brevity term that means fly over here and loiter. An example of telling someone to anchor looks like this. Dagger 1-1, one, one, magic. Anchor, Bullseye, 03560. Galaxy Jitsi 301, check in east of Roosevelt, 28 miles. Single ship, Tomcat, cap. Gypsy 31, Galaxy, radar contact, Bullseye, 20288, Angels, 28. Uh, Gypsy 31, flow east, 100 miles, anchor. East, 100 miles, and then anchor, Gypsy 31. For strike targets, things get tricky. Not as in difficult, but as in there is a limitation. At the moment, ground targets do not get shown, only radar returns from SANS. If you get a check-in for strike and you are incapable of seeing ground targets, your response would go something along the lines of Hog 1-1, one, one, Magic, Unable. Wave 1-1, one, one, checking in for strike. Wave 1-1, one, one, Galaxy, Radar Contact, Bullseye, 25344, Angels, 19, proceed as fragged. Wave 1-1. One, one. Readbacks are an entirely optional thing that most aircraft talking to you will do. A readback is simply the aircraft reading your transmission to them back at you often abbreviated, to make sure that they understood everything that you said to them. In the seed tasking example, after responding to their check-in with Viper 1-1, Magic, Radar Contact, SA-8 and SA-15 Active, Bullseye 11052, Viper 1-1 may give you a readback along the lines of Magic, Viper 1-1, SA-8 and SA-15 Active, Bullseye 11052. If they read back correctly, acknowledge them with something simple such as Viper 1-1, one, one, magic, good read back. Other aircraft when receiving their tasking may respond with something telling you that they heard or understood you, such as simply responding with magic, Viper 1-1 one, one copies. Now that you know how to respond to aircraft check-ins, you are going to be addressing the aircraft on your net consistently. 
Some requests you may end up hearing include bogey dopes, vectors to someone or somewhere, declaring a target, or requesting additional assistance. A bogey dope, as stated previously, is just a way of asking, give me a bra to the closest enemy. This can either be given on request or at your discretion. For example, if you see someone who is starting to get towards the fight, you could direct him to attack a target by saying, Viper 1-1, Magic, Group, Bra, 173, 28, 35,000, Flanking South, Foxhound. Wolf 1 1 Galaxy Threat Bra 1 2 4 16 5000 Target is faded New Threat Bra 1 0 2 25 3000 Beam North Flanker Wolf 1 1 committed if a friendly asks for a vector to another call sign or landmark, they are simply asking to be pointed in the direction of what they asked for. If you've been listening, this is likely going to include a bra of some type, or alternatively you could give a bullseye. If you are being told to vector to closest airfield, you would give them a bra to the closest friendly airfield. For example, Dagger 1-1. Vector to nearest airfield, 322-12, Novorossiysk. If you are being told to vector to home plate, you would give them a bra call to where they spawned, which if you are on GAW is likely going to be a Napa, or if they're a Navy aircraft, the boat. If you're being told to vector to another call sign, you would give them the bearing, range, and altitude in angels, since it is the correct brevity term in this instance. For example, Dagger 1-1, Vector 2, Viper 1-1, Bra 155-32, Angels 15. Ophon 3, Galaxy, Radar Contact, what, would, what did you like again? Oh, you've labeled me as LOF13, that's cool. Uh, can I get a vector to LOF11? LOF13, Galaxy, Vector2, LOF11, Bra2799, Angel16, Tracking West. LOF13. Declaring a target is often done frantically by our aircraft, and they may be in an engagement, and it's simply asking you, what is this? Where they may see something locking them up, but nothing on their radar or SA page, or they simply lost track of their target. In addition to a, what is this request, they could also be asking, where is this? A, what is this example, could be as simple as, magic, dagger 1-1, one, one. declare off my nose. Or you could see a transmission like Magic, Dagger 1 1, Group, Bullseye, 050, 22, 26,000, Declare. The much better radio transmission out of the two is where the requesting aircraft provides a bullseye to the target they want identified. A reply to this would be Dagger 1 1, Magic, Group, Bullseye, 050, 22, 26,000, track west, hostile, single contact, fulcrum. Take caution with ambiguous calls, such as my nose, as if there are a lot of aircraft around their area, you could end up calling a hostile out to them, but they mistake the target for a friendly. The best way to avoid any potential confusion or friendly fire is by exclusively using bullseye calls, as when they look to their radar page in most modern aircraft, it will give them a bullseye to whatever they may have their cursor over. A where is this example sounds like magic, Viper 1-1, declare, mainstay. Simply put, Viper 1-1 is asking, where is the mainstay? When you look on the map and you find the A-50, which has the reporting name of Mainstay as shown earlier, you would give the same call as mentioned previously to Viper 1-1, but towards the Mainstay. Viper 1-1, Magic, Group, Bullseye, 122, 87, 35,000, Track East, Hostile, Single Contact, Mainstay. 
Galaxy Nova 1-1. I have uh, two radar contacts to my bra uh, 005. Uh, one is Angel 10. The other one is Angel 5, I believe. Is the second one at Angel 5 enemy or friendly? Nova 1-1. Bullseye 12654. 11,000. Hostile fish bed. Understood. One times Fox Street. Merge is a brevity term announcing that friendlies have entered the visual arena, simply meaning that they're within visual range of each other. This also marks the point where any attempt to provide situational awareness is likely going to be completely incorrect since both parties are changing direction, speed, and altitude so much that by the time the screen refreshes to update positions, it is already going to be severely off. The radar contacts may also become indistinguishable from each other. To demonstrate this, turn on the setting at the bottom right of lot ATC called Show Primary Radar Spot. You may notice if you zoom in close enough that the icon of the aircraft and the position of the radar return can be offset. In close engagements where the two sides are moving and turning very fast, it can get disorienting, and if you make an attempt to call out anything, you will almost always be completely incorrect. Keep in mind that you are watching the battlefield in slow motion. You have a roughly 3-5 to five second refresh rate on where everything is positioned, and in terms of being in a fight, 3 seconds might as well be 3 years. Within roughly 3-5 to five miles, you would tell the aircraft that they've merged. For example, the Viper 1-1, merged. After the merge call, all you can do is watch and hope that your side comes out on top. This would also be a good time to get another aircraft to assist if possible. If you're being asked for help, or you see someone who's bitten off more than they can chew, or simply they're about to get steel clubbed, for instance, a flanker hot on an A-10, acknowledge the aircraft requesting additional assistance if applicable, and start looking for another aircraft in that area on frequency that could be available to help. Take this example. A friendly reached out to you for help. It's a 1v3, they're low on fuel and ammo. Tell them to scram. The term scram is used when a friendly asset is in immediate danger. Scram is given with a cardinal direction towards the direction of survival, typically towards friendly airspace. Dagger 1-1, one one, magic. Recommend scram, northwest. The Chuck 1-1 one one galaxy scram, northwest. You're gotten a little bit too close to the enemy carrier group. Another example where it's not as drastic of a situation, you could tell them to bug out. The term bug out tells the aircraft to separate from an engagement without the intent to return, and follows the same rules as scram, where you would give a cardinal direction towards friendly airspace. Viper 1 1, magic. Recommend bug out, east. Check 1 1, defensive SA 10. Chuckle on Galaxy, bug out west. After giving out the scram or bug out order, find a friendly aircraft in the area like I told you to that could be able to assist. If someone is close but doing something else, too bad, there's a life in danger, unless they just don't want to. Refer to the golden rule of being a GCI, you are a suggestion. More often than not, however, people will be gladly able to assist. To emphasize that this is an urgent situation when giving out a brawl call to an enemy attacking Dagger 1-1 in this example, you could use some different language, such as Viper 1-1, Magic, Threat to Dagger 1-1, Buster, Bra, 1-1-5, 20, 25,000, 3-ship, Flanker. This first new word, Threat to Dagger 1-1, is optional, but it conveys the idea that they are engaging a friendly call sign. This new word, Buster, tells the aircraft receiving this transmission to move as fast as possible. I would like to stress this again. If you are uncomfortable using all of this brevity, go back to the basics. Feel free to use common English. 
remember, it's better to be sloppy than wrong. We all have to start somewhere. I did. Wrapping up the different brevity terms and ways that you may be called upon, the final term that you may sometimes use is handing out cautions. While not actually an official term, it can be helpful navigating your aircraft around dangers such as SAM sites. If you catch an aircraft drifting too close to a threat such as a SAM cluster, you could warn them that they are doing so. There's two terms that you can use, trespass or active. The term trespass is used in addressing aircraft that are entering the threat zone of an enemy SAM. You could tell someone, Viper 1-1, Magic, Trespass, SA-10, Bullseye, 023-54. Calling active tells the aircraft that there is an emitter radiating in an area. So basically, there's a surface to air radar here. You would use the same transmission as previous, but you would switch the order of the type of contact around. For example, Viper 1-1, Magic, SA-3, Active, Bullseye, 174-47. If you are ever in a situation where you told someone something incorrect, don't panic. Simply tell them to either disregard your transmission if there is something that you've told them that could just be forgotten about, for example, Viper 1-1, Magic, disregard my last transmission. If you gave someone incorrect information, don't leave them to find out the hard way. Correct yourself by saying, Viper 1-1, Magic, correction, and then read back the correct information. I mentioned picture calls a while back. I didn't want to get into them simply because they're complicated, this is a beginner's guide, and I'm still learning them myself. Maybe one day I'll make a separate guide to doing picture calls, but today is not that day. Don't think that picture calls are useless, however. They are one of the most helpful things that you can give and can streamline giving callouts to your aircraft. For example, instead of telling someone a bra and that's a three ship, in a picture call or something similar, you could tell them their spacing, different altitudes, their formation, where they're all heading, etc. I would highly recommend, after you become comfortable doing AWACS work, to begin learning picture calls at your own pace. It can be an incredibly useful skill if you want to keep doing this regularly. I will leave some resources for picture calls below. When you wish to call it quits for the time being, you go midnight. All you have to do is mimic what you did going sunrise, but instead call that you have gone midnight. All you have to say to wrap things up is, all stations, magic is midnight. After that, enter the Hoggit Discord and type in the following command, exclamation mark GCI midnight, and you will be signed out. Remember to disconnect from lot ATC and SRS. Just like that, your first session as the AWACS is complete. Thank you so very much for watching. In the description, I have linked two very good sources of information on all things brevity and communications, as well as Damsel's GCI Academy, which I would highly recommend you join if you are interested in sharpening your skills. Thank you so, so much for watching yet again, and as always, have a good one.